places and products should be for everyone. By designing for the whole of society, the benefits of inclusion can be shared. Universal design is the process of designing an environment so it can be accessed, understood and used by as many people as possible, regardless of their ability, age, size and other factors. Universal design doesn't just benefit people with disability, it benefits all users like parents with prams, elderly visitors, tourists with luggage, put simply, everyone. Where access is mostly governed by compliance and standards, universal design is guided by principles. The seven key principles that drive universal design are equitable use, people with diverse abilities can use it, flexibility in use, it can be operated in more than one way, simple and intuitive use, it is easy to use without prior experience, perceptible information, all users can observe how to use it, tolerance for error, unintended and adverse use is minimised, low physical effort, it can be used comfortably and efficiently. Size and space for approach and use. It can be approached, reached, manipulated and used by all people. You can apply the principles of universal design to a playground, the design of a pair of scissors, a digital payment system, even a business process. It's about making things that are easy for everyone to use. Accessibility is a concept within the principles, but often universal design makes the outcome even more usable. For example, to provide access to a swimming pool for a wheelchair user, you might consider a hoist. However, a universal approach would be to provide a ramp into the water. This way, a mobility device user can access the pool with a waterproof wheelchair through the same entrance as children, elderly, or anyone else that prefers to enter the pool this way. Flexibility and the ability to adjust are two significant strengths of universal design. For example, a height adjustable bench top in a cabin will make it comfortable for all visitors to use. When the principle of simple and intuitive use is employed, it benefits people who have cognitive disabilities. But it can also provide great value to visitors who have English as a second language. This is particularly useful when providing information and signage. When upgrading physical environments and implementing systems, it's a great time to introduce universal design. If you ensure it's considered at the beginning, you'll likely have an outcome that's more usable, less likely to require multiple options of the same thing, and it'll probably have a longer lifespan. The ideal way to go about planning and developing a tourism product with universal design is by using a co-creation or co-design method. It involves engaging with a person or group who have lived experience. This allows us to contribute and provide insights into our needs and therefore get a great result. The co-design of public spaces is resulting in more usable and sometimes innovative spaces. The use of beach matting is growing in Australia because it's an example of solving a problem that provides benefit to all beachgoers, not just those using wheelchairs. The ideas central to universal design can be used in a range of ways to make visits more welcoming. For example, making a door less heavy to push or providing automatic doors benefits all users. Ensuring things are within reach for children, people of short stature and wheelchair users is another low cost or free option to make experiences more universally accessible. A recent report found if products and services are designed with unique needs in mind, organisations have the potential to reach four times the number of intended customers. It makes sense to use universal design thinking in all your environments, your information and your systems and processes. 